eat more and move less. Intermittent fasting is gone. Seed cycling out essential oils, warm food. Connection with other people. Hey everyone and welcome back to part three of my HA journey and trying to get my period back. Thank you for the beautiful feedback on my last video. There were lots of comments about how refreshing it was for honesty and open conversation about these issues that many women are facing regardless of if you have HA or not. And again, I'll reiterate my point in sharing and being open and vulnerable is not only to help myself heal, but to make other people feel less alone. When I went through issues getting pregnant with Hunter, I felt incredibly alone and incredibly isolated. And I feel like if I'd come across a video of someone talking openly about their infertility problems, then perhaps I would have felt more connected with that. So since experiencing that myself, it's been a real mission of mine to have open and honest conversations and be vulnerable and share about the difficulties that I'm going through because chances are other people are going through them as well. So to me, it is so important to share and to put information out there. It's my journey at the end of the day. It's not yours. You don't have to love it. You don't have to learn from it. But note that I'm putting it out there for good reason. And I do hope that it can help anyone on their journey as well. In the last video, I explored what HA is, what it is caused by, and the symptoms that are presented if you are suffering from HA more than just not having your period. So please check out that video. I've linked it below if you haven't already seen it. We're looking at things like night sweats and being cold and frequent urination, which are things that I had no idea were connected to not having my period, but they're all me in a nutshell. And it just makes me even more motivated to want to get my period back. So how exactly do you get your period back? How do you recover from HA? Well, the fundamentals are to eat more and move less. Now, if you've read No Period, Now What? or you've come across any information before on YouTube, Stephanie Buttermore has some excellent information out there on her vlogs. The best way to do this is to go all in, and that is to eat everything and anything and to not move at all. Now, I don't know about you, that causes me a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety, and the whole concept of doing that completely and utterly freaks me out. So I'm not doing that. I'm working my way up to being all in. The idea of going all in completely petrifies me for multiple reasons, and I will explore them throughout this vlog, and I will also share with you 10 things that I am doing to help myself heal from HA and really make sure that this is a focus for myself all the time. Going all in isn't suitable for me, and I'll just give you a little indication as to why. I've spent the better part of my adult life having extremely bad digestive issues. Whether that's caused by what I'm eating or what I'm not eating, I don't know. I've tried many things to try and heal it before. All I know is that when I eat certain foods, I become incredibly uncomfortable, resulting in the all night being very crampy, the next day being stuck on the toilet for hours at a time sometimes, and then not wanting to eat for the entire day because I'm actually in an immense amount of discomfort. Now, a lot of people who have gone all in have spoken about having to push through that pain and eat through that. That's okay for some people, but I have a little boy to look after the next day and I need to be, still need to be the best version of myself so I can look after him. And I can't be doing that if I'm in immense discomfort physically. I also can't be the best mum if I'm mentally not in a good place. A lot of the time with going all in, it results in rapid weight gain. And I don't have anything against people gaining weight, but I'm not going to sit here and say that the idea of gaining 10, 15 kilos doesn't scare the absolute crap out of me because it definitely does. And I can't put myself in a position where I'm going to rapidly gain weight and, and therefore not feel happy in myself and be confident with who I am because that's going to severely impact me as a wife and me as a mother. And I can't risk that. Going all in means doing no exercise whatsoever, not even going on walks. I'll talk in depth about what I'm doing about exercise in a moment, but just quickly, exercise is a really big part of my mental health and completely getting rid of that in its entirety, cold turkey on exercise, is not something that I feel comfortable doing. As I said just then, I need to be the best version of myself. So all in is not actually a strategy that I'm willing to do at the moment. I am building myself up into being all in, 
but I want to be completely upfront and completely honest with you all about how I'm going about doing this. So all in, hopefully maybe one day we'll be there, but we're not there yet. And if that just simply means that I'm prolonging getting my period back, I'm okay with that because I'm taking it at my own pace and I'm doing it in a way that I think is best for me. So let's start. What am I doing to heal myself from HA? Number one, intermittent fasting is gone. I did intermittent fasting or IF for many, many years, about four years, I think. I didn't eat before 11 and I stopped eating at 7. And the main reason I did that was to give my body time to relax and restore and help my digestive system heal itself. And majority of the time, it was amazing. I trained my body into not even being hungry before 11, so I wasn't, didn't feel like I was starving myself. But as we now know, I have disordered hunger cues, so... Who knows what was really going on there? And I stopped eating after seven because I found that if I ate late at night, I was also having problems with my digestive system during the night and in the morning. But intermittent fasting is long gone. I'm now eating at 6 a.m. in the morning as soon as I wake up and I'm eating until about 10.30 at night every two hours throughout the day, constantly making sure that I have fuel in my body and that I'm never hungry. And I'm doing that so I can make sure that my system is never dipping into its reserves. I want to be making sure that I've always got energy for my body to burn just through doing normal activities throughout my day. You know, looking after a toddler can be really tiring and hard work sometimes. So I want to make sure that I'm adequately fueled. So intermittent fasting is gone. Number two, I am eating a minimum of two and a half thousand calories a day. Now, I didn't just get here right away. It took me eight weeks to build up to eating that much per day. And I am tracking that through Chronometer. The reason I am tracking that is for two reasons. One, I want to really make sure that I'm eating enough every single day. Because I know that with my own disordered eating patterns and thoughts, I will have a tendency just to say, nah, I've had enough and not eat it, and therefore accidentally under eat. A big part of people going all in is just having access to any type of food. You know, they'll eat pizzas and ice cream, and that can be fine, but that type of food doesn't sit well with me physically and also mentally. I know too much information about the dangers of eating all of those foods. I love whole foods. I'm doing this through eating whole foods and nothing else. I don't eat junk food. I don't eat preservatives. I'm whole foods, plant-based, through and through, no oil. So that is what I'm sticking to. And in order to stick to that, I need to track and I need to make sure that I'm eating two and a half thousand calories a day. I built it up slowly because as mentioned previously, I didn't want to affect my IBS symptoms and my digestive issues. So I knew that if I just all of a sudden started eating everything, even if it was whole foods, I was going to be ending up in a lot of pain and a lot of discomfort. What I will do for you later down the track is I will share a video of everything I'm eating and what two and a half thousand calories looks like on a whole foods plant-based diet. It's a fair chunk of food and I'm actually loving eating it. I'm never really hungry and I'm never really full. I'm just kind of eating throughout the day all the time, but I do have it pretty regimented at the moment. Number three is I am moving less. I am definitely not moving, not at all, but I am moving much less. So I am waking up in the morning and spending half an hour doing some exercise and some movement. That's not recommended when you go all in, but for me, it is a huge part of my morning routine. I struggled so much last isolation because and, and last lockdown because I didn't have a routine in place for myself. And When you go all in, people talk about finding a new routine and away from movement because a lot of the time we feel like we have to move and we have to exercise and those disordered thought patterns come into play. For me though, this movement is about honoring my body and looking after it and I love to move and I love the way it makes me feel. So I've drastically changed the way in which I am moving my body. I'm doing low intensity movement, nothing high intensity whatsoever. I haven't run since November and I used to run every single day. So it's like I was kind of already working towards this being a goal without even realizing it. And then throughout the day, I'm doing a nice gentle walk, as gentle as you can around this area. It's quite hilly, but with my family. So that is important family time. So I am walking and I'm doing half an hour of low intensity exercise. As I progress and if I don't see many changes, I might change that up a little bit. Maybe swap out some of the low intensity movement in the morning for more yoga and even lower intensity exercise. But for the time being, that's what I'm doing in terms of exercise. 
less movement, less exercise, but I'm still doing it daily. Number four, sleep and stress. I'm just going to group them in together. It's really critical that I am looking after my body and I'm getting enough sleep. So making sure that I have about eight hours sleep a night. I'm pretty good at doing that anyway, but some nights it can be seven hours. So I'm really trying to make sure I get eight hours and then most nights journaling a little bit about the experience and what I'm going through. And that's to get a really big handle on my stress at the moment as well. And just to have open, honest communication about the process. So talking to Michael about everything I'm feeling, talking to my mom about everything I'm feeling as as well and just being pretty honest with everything that's going on number five and now we start to get into things that are a little bit less from the all in and a little bit left of center as you will but this is more the holistic and natural side of things and this is what i love and at the end of the day if these tips you think are crazy or they're not working with you that's fine you can ignore them but for me this is really where I like to invest more of my time and I think it's really really important so number five I am seed cycling with the moon so if you don't know anything about seed cycling it is where you eat different seeds throughout the different time in your cycle because I don't know where my cycle is I don't know where my follicular cycle starts and ends or my luteal phase starts and ends it's really important that I match that up with the moon cycle. So once upon a time, we used to have our periods with the moon when we were very, very in sync with nature. And it is a beautiful thing to be in sync with nature. So for the first 14 days of my cycle, which is just to do with the moon because I don't have any idea where my cycle is, I take two seeds. I take a tablespoon of pita seeds and a tablespoon of flax seeds every day. And then for the second half of my cycle, from the full moon to the new moon, which is the luteal phase of my cycle, I take two different seeds, which are sesame seeds and sunflower seeds. The reason you take those seeds is also with the different nutrition levels in those seeds. And we're looking at how they affect the hormones in our body. Is there a lot of scientific information on this? No. But does that mean it doesn't work? No. And at the end of the day, Taking a few extra seeds every day is going to be beneficial for me anyway, because it's going to be healthy fats in my body and it's going to be a variety of different plant foods, which is great for my gut health too. So it can't hurt just to try, but I'm loving it. And I start my day with the seeds and it's fantastic. Number six is acupuncture and Chinese tea. So I've been seeing my acupuncturist pretty much fortnightly for the last three months and I'm loving going to her. She's fantastic. She's a bit like my therapist. I'll link her below, Casey, if you're watching. She's amazing. But that has been a fantastic resource to go to. So I've been getting acupuncture done in my womb in different ways and having extra stimulation put through my ovaries as well. This is something I dabbled in a little bit before, but I wasn't as consistent with it as this time. And I'm finding it really great. Even if it's just to go and relax, it's going to be helping my stress levels too. The Chinese herbs I take every morning and every night, and that is made up with a blend to really warm my body. So in terms of Chinese medicine and looking through HA through a different lens, I have a yin kidney deficiency, which is all about having a cold womb. So you might have heard someone talk about wanting to warm up your womb before or to release the eggs in your ovaries, we need to keep warm. So the Chinese herbs are meant to be doing exactly that. And I love looking at everything through a more holistic lens as well. So doing HA through all in and trying to build up my calories and move less, but then also warming up my body through the foods that I'm eating, which brings me on to seven, which is warm foods. So out have gone all the smoothie bowls, which were freezing up my insides a bit too much and I'm filling my soul with warm food so I'm having warm smoothies which is actually delicious and not as gross as you might think I'm loving them so much and I'm having warm beautiful delicious food all day curry soups for dinner the lunch I'm making this amazing rice pudding at the moment with stewed fruits goji berries, Chinese red dates, red foods, which from a Chinese medicine point of view are really, really, really good for healing the blood. So I'm really making sure that the food I'm eating and how I'm eating it is going to be beneficial to my system as well. Warm tea and warm water throughout the day too. Number eight, is all about essential oils and I love my essential oils. I use them for everything from cleaning to skincare to cuts and abrasions, everything. And trust me about it, I'm definitely using them to try and get my period back. 
two ways I'm doing this with oils is this one here, which is a balancing roll on blend. And that is to restore my hormones. So I put that on two times a day on my wrists, on my pulse points. And I actually love it. It's a really calming blend as well. I'll put down below what's exactly in that blend. And the second thing I'm doing is this here, which I have made a rub for specifically for amenorrhea. And that's to help with balancing hormones too. But I rub that onto my womb or my abdomen area every single night and every morning as well hopefully in the help that those oils will seep right on in and have a little bit of conversation with my ovaries and get some things kickstarting as well. Regardless of if they're going to work or not, I love my oils and I really think that everyone should get involved in oils too. Number nine, and this is tied in with my oils as well, is really connecting with myself more and connecting with the earth. And I know that might sound a little bit hippy dippy for some people, but for so many years I've hated my body and I haven't felt connected in it and I haven't felt whole. My little mantra for myself at the moment is whole and connected. And every time I put these oils on my body, I say that to myself over and over again. As I'm rubbing them into my stomach, I imagine myself functioning correctly and being whole and connected and changing the way I speak about myself. I used to say I was broken all the time, even if it was just a joke. And I realized that that was probably playing into the fact that I was broken. Our mind is extremely powerful. So I'm trying to connect more with myself. I'm taking my shoes off and walking around outside more. I'm connecting to the earth and connecting to the natural seasons and the cycles. So that's a really big, powerful thing for me as well. I'm dancing naked every morning. You'll know I love to dance if you follow me on Instagram, but I'm not going to post up there that I'm dancing nude after my shower. But I just want to really feel comfortable in my skin, especially as I go through this process. The chances of me gaining weight throughout this journey are really high, and I want to try and love my body at every single stage. So I'm touching my body, I'm loving my body, I'm rubbing oils on my body, and I'm feeling connected and whole. And even if I'm not feeling good about it, I'm going to tell myself I am because the mind is extremely powerful. Gaining weight does petrify me. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sit here and say that it doesn't. I don't want to gain weight, but the chances of me gaining weight throughout this are really, really high. So we're just going to go with it and we're going to try and love this body at every single stage, including this healing phase, because this is so critical for my well-being. Lastly, Number 10, and this is connection with other people. I joined a support group on Facebook for those going through the exact same thing that I'm going through. And I probably read their posts an unhealthy amount, but it makes me feel so connected to other people. I'm commenting, sharing my journey, and I'm connecting with other people about what they're going through. I can't stress this enough. We need human connection. We need to know we're not alone in this world. And that's why I feel so compelled to share what I'm going through right now. But it's critical that you find a support team, regardless of what you're going through in your own life. So please make sure you have supportive people around you, whether they're going through the same thing or not. Find the people that you can talk to about your highs and your lows and share with them when you can. Talking and reaching out to other people, going through similar things to you is exactly what we all need. We need a place where we feel like we can share and be vulnerable and get those feelings out into the world to people that are going to respect them, acknowledge them and understand them. Stop sharing to people that are going to tear you down and be negative towards you and are going to dismiss your feelings. You need to find people around you that are going to listen and respect and just hold space for you to experience what you need to experience. If you don't have those people in your life, come find me. I really would love to chat to you about anything. So please reach out if you need anyone to talk to about anything about this journey or any other journey as well. We need to support each other in this world. It's so critical. So they are the 10 things that I am doing to heal myself from HA, to recover from HA, to get my period back, to stop feeling cold, to stop weeing all the time, to feel whole and connected in my body. And so far, it's going pretty well. I don't have my period back yet, 
but I'm keen to give you a really proper update on everything that's going on. So when I jump on here next time, it will have been three months since I've been on this journey and I want to give you all the nitty gritty details about the changes that I've noticed in my body physically and mentally. So please like, share, leave a comment below, definitely subscribe and stay tuned for the next part where I tell you all the changes that have been going on with me since starting this HA journey. Much love and strength to anyone going through this.